Hi, Max and Zoe. I hope you love this one as much as we do. It's Cosmo's Moon by Devin Skillian. Cosmo's Moon. Cosmo loved the moon. He had moon pajamas and a moon nightlight and stars and moons all over his bedroom. Every night, Cosmo's mother and father gave him a hug and a kiss and tucked him into his bed. But just as soon as they closed his bedroom door, he threw aside the covers and ran to open the window and watched as the golden moon came into the night sky just above the sycamore tree. And as gentle night breeze blew across the curtains, Cosmo would talk and the moon would listen. Some nights, Cosmo would tell the moon the funniest stories and his happiest dreams. Some nights, Cosmo would tell the moon about sad things. And like best friends always do, the moon listened to those too. Some nights before going to bed, Cosmo would take a walk in the moonlight and no matter where he walked, it looked to Cosmo if the moon were following him. I think the moon is following me, he said one evening. I know, said his mother. It fools us that way. It's because the moon is so very big. Not exactly, said his father. It's because the moon is so very far away. Actually, it's both, said his grandfather, holding a large coin in front of Cosmo's nose. It's because the moon is so very big and yet so very far away. But Cosmo wasn't so sure. Lately, the moon seemed to be just behind him all the time. When he was eating breakfast, oh, I see him. While he was at recess, while he was on his way home from school, at his little league baseball games. For Cosmo, it was always nighttime and the day his family sat down for a picnic lunch under the glow of the giant moon, barely able to see the piece of cheese in his hand, his father finally asked, where in the world is the sun? The moon seems to be out at the oddest times lately. I told you, father, said Cosmo, I think the moon is following me. His family stared at him, but yes, the more they thought about it, the more they realized that Cosmo never seemed to be without his moon. How strange, said his father. How odd, said his mother. How wonderful, said his grandfather. And he gave Cosmo a hug and told him he must be a special boy. Sometimes it was difficult to know just when to go to bed, and it was almost impossible to wake up on time. But slowly, the family got used to the constant glow of Cosmo's moon. Until one night, there was a knock at the door. It was from a group of astronomers who wanted to know why, after millions of years, the moon had changed its ways. They had spent days and days peering into their telescopes and believed the boy who lived at 29 Luna Lane had something to do with the moon's behavior. It's coming from the oceans, said one. The tides can't come in without the moon. It's confusing the oceans, said one. The tides can't come in without the moon. It's confusing the flowers, said the second. The morning glories never get any sun, so they never bloom. And it's confusing the dogs, said the third. Listen to that racket. Indeed, 
Dogs were howling all over town, howling at the moon that never left the sky. Surely you're not suggesting Cosmo has anything to do with it, said Cosmo's father. That's exactly what we're suggesting, said one. Perhaps a giant ray gun on the roof. Or an ultra-magnetic stealth beam from a radio. How diabolical, said his mother, said another. That's absurd, said Cosmo's father. The question is, said the first, glaring at Cosmo, why is the moon following you? I'm not sure, said Cosmo. I'll ask him. Ask him? laughed the astronomers. You're going to ask the moon? They thought it was terribly funny, but Cosmo climbed the stairs to his room and leaned out the bedroom window. You've been following me, said Cosmo, and the moon seemed to blush. Yes, said the moon, I have. But why, asked Cosmo. The moon beamed. Because you're good and kind. You talk to me, said the moon, and I know I make you happy. So I wanted you to be happy all of the time, not just during the evenings. Gosh, that's nice, said Cosmo, and for a moment they just sat enjoying each other's company. Finally, Cosmo said, it's really wonderful, really, but the ocean tides are lost without you. I didn't realize, said the moon, and the morning glories never bloom. I hadn't thought of that either, the moon answered, and the dogs are making an awful racket. I do know that, said the moon, and they listened to the howls from up and down the street. But don't you want me with you, asked the moon. Of course, said Cosmo, but you know what the best part is? It's watching you come up each night. The way you appear at the end of the day, but now you're always there. I guess I missed that part. That's a lovely thing to say, said the moon, and they both stared into the branches of the sycamore. I guess never saying goodbye means you never get to say hello, said the moon. And he looked to the faraway oceans and smiled the morning, at the morning glories patiently waiting to bloom. You'll still be here and you'll still talk to me, he asked. Every night, said Cosmo, I'll be waiting right here. The astronomers were still laughing when Cosmo came downstairs. And when he told them that the moon had agreed to return to its orbit, they laughed even louder until a gentle beam of sunlight broke the horizon and shined through the doorway. And so the tides returned to their to and fro against the sand. The morning glories again bloomed in the morning sun, and the dogs returned their attention to burying bones and chasing the neighbor's cats. But every once in a while, you'll see the moon quietly sneak into the daytime sky. Those are the days when the moon wants to spend just a little extra time with Cosmo, the boy who loved him most of all. The end. I hope you guys had a great day.